at the Lawrence Hall of Science Planetarium, we're lucky to have students from UC Berkeley as presenters. Even though the planetarium is closed for now, they can't resist sharing with you the excitement of astrophysics. Welcome, I'm Ellen from the Lawrence Hall of Science Planetarium. I've had a lot of extra time on my hands lately, and I've been wondering about some big questions about the universe. Do you ever find yourself wondering, how old is the universe? Or like one of my favorite planetarium programs likes to ask, how big is the universe? Well, lucky for us curious minds, there is a special branch of astronomy all about answering these big questions. It's called cosmology. Scientists who focus on cosmology try to figure out how the universe started how it's grown over time, and what it'll be like way, way in the future. This is what scientists today think the history of the universe up to now looks like. It kind of looks like a tipped over cup spilling out milk e ways. We'll talk more about this funky timeline in future videos. Here are some pictures of some of the different ways scientists think the universe could end. Again, we'll talk more about what all of these pictures mean later. But I will say now, don't worry about the universe ending anytime soon. The world might feel like it's ending sometimes, but it's definitely not. The study of cosmology has been a thing for a long, long time. Really, people all across time and all around the world have always asked the same questions as you and me. A long, long time ago, people thought that all there really was to the universe was the Earth and everything they could see in the sky. And people used to think that the Earth was flat. This sounds silly to us now. But if you go outside and look around, it's easier to imagine that you're at the flat bottom of a big snow globe rather than on a big ball. There are lots of clues, though, that the Earth is actually round. For example, the Earth casts a curved shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse. People noticed clues like this and started to like thinking that the Earth was round instead of flat. For a while, the most popular model of the universe was called the geocentric model, which says that the Earth is round and also says that the Earth is at the center of the universe. I'm using the desktop planetarium program Stellarium, where I can make time go by faster than real life. I see that the sun moves across the sky, and so do the planets. After the sun sets, I see the stars come out, and they seem to move across the sky as well. Just looking at the way things move around in the sky, it's easy to believe that the Earth is at the center of the universe. But just like there are clues that the Earth is round instead of flat, there are plenty of clues that the Earth goes around the Sun instead of the other way around. The scientist Copernicus said that you could prove the Earth went around the Sun using something called parallax. Here's an example of parallax. Hold your finger out at eye level about an arm's width away and close one eye. Now, when I say go, Close your open eye, and at the same time, open your closed eye. Ready? Go! Did you see anything interesting? Try doing that back and forth a few times as fast as you can. Left wink, right wink, left wink, right wink. Did you see anything interesting? If you said, my finger's moving, you're right. Well, your finger isn't really moving, but it looks like it is. Copernicus's idea was that you could look at a star, say this star, at a certain time of year, say the month of January, and that star would seem to be somewhere over here in this picture, closer to the bottom stars than the top stars. Then you would wait six months and the Earth would go around its orbit around the sun, and you could look at that star in July, only this time it would look closer to these top stars. Now, doing Copernicus's experiment, you would only actually see the star move a teensy tiny bit, 
and the telescopes during Copernicus's time weren't all that great. So the other scientists didn't actually see the parallax effect, and they kept believing that the Earth was at the center of the universe. But lots of clues kept coming up over time that said the Earth wasn't at the center. For example, the astronomer Galileo's discovery of Jupiter's four largest moons were the first objects anyone had seen that clearly orbited around something other than the Earth. So people eventually agreed that the Earth goes around the Sun, and this model, called the heliocentric model, became the most popular idea of what the universe looked like. Over time, people learned that the stars are much further away than they used to think. Even the ones we call nearby are super far. We realized that the universe wasn't just our solar system, that our sun is just one of many stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and we're not at the center. Astronomers wondered how big the Milky Way galaxy was, and whether the galaxy was the whole universe, or if the universe was even bigger. An astronomer named Henrietta Swan Leavitt found a way to tell how far away certain very distant stars are. People learned from this how enormous the Milky Way is, but when they saw little fuzzy blobs of light in their telescopes, they did not know whether those were cloudy objects inside the Milky Way galaxy, or whether they were other galaxies much farther away. Then, only about a century ago, the astronomer Edwin Hubble made a discovery that made people's idea of the universe get a whole lot bigger. In one of those fuzzy blobs that people called the Andromeda Nebula, he was able to see individual stars in his telescope. Using Swan Levitt's method, he learned that the stars in the Andromeda Nebula are far outside the Milky Way. Now, people call it the Andromeda Galaxy, and it's one of the many galaxies that has been observed outside the Milky Way. Scientists have also discovered that other galaxies are moving away from the Milky Way because the universe is actually expanding. So the universe is growing all the time, and it's actually full of billions and billions of galaxies. And of course, the Milky Way is not at the center. It might be kind of sad that we aren't at the center of everything, and it may seem scary that the universe is so big. But just because you aren't at the center of the universe, that doesn't mean you aren't special. And just because the universe is too big to imagine, you're not too small to matter. Even though you and I are small compared to how big the universe is, we still have big ideas and big questions. So keep wondering and keep asking those big questions.